doing it. Technology. Beanie, 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 Ugh, beanie. It's so complicated. Like <laughs> I feel like if it was ever just up to me to have to figure this stuff out, I feel like I would give up. <laughs> I actually feel like I just saw that happen on your face. Like as soon as you it couldn't is. hear me in your AirPods, you were like, oh, I'm done. I was like, it's done. We're never it's having done. a podcast. It's, it's impossible. I think because it just feels so – I don't know what it is, like what connections in my brain that like <laughs> – that make it seem like insurmountable mm-hmm. to like figure out like some technology things. It's also a story I think I tell myself that I probably need to – work on maybe like (laughs) rewriting that narrative. I feel like I reinforce it like in my life. I create circumstances that reinforces this narrative that technology is an impossible feat for me. Yeah. Like, I mean, you know, I see it and then you did it. (laughs) And it was like, I was trying not to like literally (laughs) as I was like, with you literally like reiterating and repeating the same steps and offering like encouragement along the way and like helping my (laughs) sense of (laughs) self-esteem. It's like you can do it. You can do it. You're doing now a great go to job. Set speaker. <laughs> <laughs> There's a down arrow. Click on that. <laughs> oh man. I know. It I just it's thing. funny because I get frustrated, obviously. It's so classic, right? To get frustrated helping your parents with technology. And I already mm. see that it's like happening to me. We're now like different technologies are like coming. I don't know, just like with TikTok, for example. My little sister, who's like definitely Gen Z, we always argue. She's like, I'm a millennial, millennial. and I'm like, you're definitely Gen Z, dude. You know how to use TikTok. Uh-huh. There you go. Like, that's, yeah, that's, that's the, it. That is the definition. <laughs> I was like, if you know how to use TikTok, I mean, I'm sure there are older people, but it's like funny because I'm already seeing it like happen for me where I'm just like, this is too complicated, this technology, like what's happening. You're weighing like is the value that it it brings into my life versus like how much I'm going to have to effort to figure this out. Totally. (laughs) I mean, I stopped playing video games after Nintendo 64 because once it turned into like Xbox and like things became like three dimensional, like the joystick movement, I was like, Uh oh, oh no. (laughs) Like my brain doesn't do this. I was like, I can, this is no longer 2D shit. Yes. I was like, this is no longer for me. (laughs) That's amazing. I know I actually had this like, I had this really incredible, kind of very intense experience with my daughter Evie last. A, f- a few days ago. Now she's just about to turn 10 mm-hmm. and she just went into the fifth grade. And sh- in her school, it's like the fifth and sixth graders together. So she's got some friends that are a little older and they have a group chat that she chats with them on her iPad. And they were all like talking about something. And for whatever reason, I was like, oh, Evie, can I look at this group chat so I can understand like where everybody is? They were talking about like some COVID policies in the school. And I wanted to understand where the kids' heads were at and where her head was at. And she's like, sure. And I read this text like thread and I registered a very small percentage of like what they were the, actually like, talking words about. that they're using and stuff. The words that they were using and they were using these sticker things. They were communicating in stickers and that they would put on top of the text messages so you couldn't even actually see what was texted. And like it was this whole thing. And I actually – it was the first time in my parenting journey that I fully felt that whatever that feeling is that parents – that I witnessed my parents have when they were so uncomfortable with some music I was listening to or some (laughs) fashion choice or some where they just didn't get it. And it made them scared and they couldn't understand. And so the (laughs) default is to just shut that shit down. Like like, you can't talk to your friends anymore anymore because I don't understand the language. (laughs) Absolutely. Felt bubbling up inside of me like this is no good and let's not text anymore. And I didn't say anything like that. I just kind of sat with it and I looked at Evie I'm sitting on the floor with her iPad and I look at her and I'm just like, please help me understand. (laughs) That's what I said to her. I was just like, please help me understand what is happening. And I I feel concerned. Am I supposed to be concerned? And Uh, she's like, no, this is everybody's humor. And she had to like go into trying to explain to me what was going on. But she definitely felt misunderstood and like kind of insecure because of that. And it was like, but I definitely struggled with like trying not to make a judgment 
but also being concerned about how they were communicating with each other. There were like some cuss words in there and stuff that I was like, oh my God. It was this really interesting experience that was like very eye-opening. And I was like, oh my goodness, I I have almost a preteen situation here and this kid is not little anymore. And that's so I don't wild. Know. It was really wild. I remember just, you know, when you start to think your parents are like just so out of touch. You're like a teenager right. and you're like, what? No. I mean, sometimes I still feel that way, but <laughs> but it's just like For it's going to happen yeah. to us. It's going to happen, I think. Yeah. And I think it's important. I hope that I and we together help me remember mm-hmm. this. I, I hope will that I try. have the awareness to remember that. You know what I mean? It's like the whole idea, right. the very simple idea of like remembering what it was like to be a kid and remembering going through that and knowing that it's going to look completely different for right. our kids versus like what it was for us, you know? And I don't know. I just hope that I'm not judgmental to the point where – just judgmental. I hope I'm more open. And it creates a divide. Yeah, yeah I absolutely. hope I'm more open to like – hearing how because I really do believe like right now so many people are like frustrated and love to like talk shit about Gen Z especially but I actually like love them because I see the evolution and like yeah they're like they're still young right but I do see like the evolution in the way in which like they're super passionate about just like the world and like doing right and good and like yes it can be like (laughs) maybe a little obnoxious in some of the ways that they go about it or like the sense of entitlement. Mm -hmm. But I actually like, I just think it's all like resisting the change that comes with like the next wave of like humans is just so silly to me. Like, why would I be just harshly judging them to the point where I can't even like be open to what it is that they're seeing and the way that they're viewing the world? You know what I mean? Exactly. I love it. I fucking love Gen Z. (laughs) I'm like, demand better like treatment at work do it i think it's good (laughs) fuck yes and i think it's like worth asking like where does that discomfort come from that just like the resistance to witnessing a generation different than you and that has like changed and it's because the world is different it's because we're afraid of change and because when we don't understand something, it makes us afraid that something bad is going to happen. And I think that if you can just remember to instead of when there's something that presents itself that makes you start feeling afraid, if you can just like get curious, right? Like I think that that is, that is like what I'm main- trying to do. Yeah. Yeah. With Evie is because I recognize I'm – not understanding what's happening and I'm responding in fear. Like that I'm having a fear response because this is like, doesn't seem like it's like good communication and it doesn't seem like this is how I want people talking to my daughter. And it was like all these things happening. And what I did was instead of like making judgments, I mean, I'm sure I said some comments that were probably judgmental until I realized what was happening. And then I was like, Evie, please help me understand. I, I'm recognizing that I don't understand what's going on here. And I want to be able to understand it because I trust you to tell me like when things are good for you and when things aren't good for you, you know, when you feel like uncomfortable about something or if you feel like this is chill and just good humor. And so, and this is interesting and it kind of ties into what we were talking a little bit earlier about, you know, when we were talking before we started recording just about like fear and a lot of the fear we create and the stories we tell and we create fear within ourselves that mm-hmm. isn't actually mm-hmm. – it's not actually real. It's just – it's an ex- you're creating a landscape within your own psyche that is just ripe with fear. And after I asked Evie to try – to like help me understand this conversation, she I, – I just saw how tense – she was like upset. And I was asking her, I was like, Evie, why are you so upset right now? Like, what is happening? And and she told me, she said, I was afraid that you were going to go on my iPad and yell at all my friends. I think oh, that's gosh. what she said to me. I was like, oh my goodness, Evie. <laughs> I was, and I, what I told her is I said, because she sensed my like disapproval, quote unquote, with how they were communicating with each other and the cuss words they were using. Then her response was she was afraid that I was going to go in and like, shut that down or something like that and probably embarrass her. 
And so I had to ask her, I said, Evie, have I ever done anything like that to you? Have mm-hmm. I ever like invaded your friend group or like yelled at one of your friends? <laughs> and she's yeah. like, no. I, I was like, so I've never done that for you because it's really important for me to respect your like privacy and your friend groups. I would never, ever talk to any of your friends unless I had your permission. And then what I told her is I said, Evie, you're telling a story about me to yourself that isn't true, that is causing you pain right now. Uh, You know? Did you ask her, like, where do you think that came from? Because I'm curious about that. Well, so we talked about – she was just telling me, like, that was like a fear. She was afraid. Right. She's definitely, like, can be sensitive to being embarrassed. And so she Mm, created this, like, worst-case scenario (laughs) that, (laughs) like, I was going to really embarrass her. Right. Okay. And then I told her this story. I was like, I know know I've embarrassed you probably, unfortunately, at times, you know, and not meaning to. But, like, I've never intentionally invaded your privacy and, like, gone right, behind right. your back and talked to your friends. And so I, I asked – I was like, Evie, please don't tell stories about me that aren't true. Yeah. Don't tell t- stories about me to yourself that aren't true. And she really was like – her eyes were wide and she was like, okay, okay. Like, she was understanding, I think, and really seeing that. And we – because we've been talking a lot about, like – making assumptions and creating pain or struggle within yourself that isn't actually real. You're just like right. creating it within yourself. And I've been talking about this with my girls and it's something I'm actively, yes. you know, going through myself. And it's just like, we do that all the time. We create so much pain for ourselves all the time when it's not real, right? Yeah, totally. I mean, that's like literally so much of the pain that we experience is that maybe even most of it really. Most and it's of the funny pain, that you I say think. this, that you're talking about it because the last – few times we've just had personal conversations on the phone, you have been literally saying a fear that's in your mind and following it up with, and I know that's a story I'm telling myself and I'm working on that, (laughs) (laughs) which is like, because you were like, I'm feeling like I'm really alone and like there's nobody in the world. (laughs) And you're like, I know that's a story. Uh, And it's so true. It's just like all this suffering. It really brings me back to like my focus, remember word for this year or whatever was like ease. Because every time I think about that word, I really realize that I'm just like creating so much more drama for myself. Yes. From my interpretations, from how serious I'm taking things. And the other, and the thing is, is like as I've just grown in like my confidence and self-worth and in my ability to like take a step back and like look at everything, I just realized that it doesn't like so much of like what is hard in life I create in my mind. Mm. It's so unnecessary. Like some of the suffering is just so unnecessary and it just doesn't need to be that way. It reminds me actually, you know, we both have this like little obsession with what's his name? Kevin James Thornton. Oh my gosh. On Instagram slash TikTok. I love him so much. I love him. (laughs) Shout out, Kevin. We love you. (laughs) Love that man. I think I've watched almost all of his videos because he's like just such a delight to like go through everything. And I resonate with everything he says so much. Last night, actually, I was trying to find one to send to my mom to try and introduce her. And I was like going through them all. And I was like, wow, I can't send any of these. (laughs) They're too much. She's not ready for it. I was like, she's not ready. But I've sent them to all of my siblings. And all of my siblings are like, yes. Because he has a lot of talks. He has a lot of narratives around like youth group. And like if you were raised super Christian, it like can resonate. So that's his like shit. And how he goes about it in like creating humor from things that we're yes. all realizing, oh my God, we all like went through this shit and we all know exactly what he's talking about. And it's yes. bringing levity. It's bringing so much levity into something that otherwise could feel heavy and gross or and weird. weird. You know? Yeah. Just like also when things were like levity to situations that like I haven't necessarily thought about how weird they were. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. And so he'll like, oh, yeah. like just like talking about like youth group and you're like, oh my gosh, that's actually really strange. <laughs> That is really bizarre, and I normalize that. Yes, yeah. yes. And so, well, one of his things that I recently watched was he was like, it's like one of his videos where he's like, just he does this thing where he like literally looks like he just woke up from a nap, and he's like still in bed with like a covers half over his eyes. Uh huh. And he's just like, I'm just thinking about how all the suffering he went through because he's also gay, so he talks about like being raised super religious and being gay and being scared in that situation. Uh-huh. 
And he's like, and I'm just like thinking about the suffering I experienced around being like accepted as like a gay man. And he's like, and I'm just looking back because he's he seems very healed. Like he's not mm-hmm. like in that place still. And he's like, and I'm just realizing how it was just all in my head and just so mm-hmm. unnecessary. And I really resonated with that from the point of like when I look back on the most like painful and darkest points of my life, so much of that was just like, I don't know, it was just like self-loathing that like literally like there was just no point. There was no right. point. Like, I mean, I obviously had to like do my own version of like unwrapping it and growth so that I didn't like hate myself. And like that right. is important. But looking back on it, I'm like, wow, like it could have just been so much easier. I think that humor, like humor is seriously, the more humor I can bring to situations, the better and easier like life gets because it just like, I don't know. I have moments where I'm just like, if I can just keep reminding myself that maybe this is all like a kind of a joke. (laughs) Yeah. Great cosmic joke. Uh, Yeah. I'm like, it's just, it helps me like be kinder. The thing is, is it's not from a place I want to be like careful to call out that it's not like minimizing the importance of things. It's more just like, or avoiding or any of that. The, The subtle difference is like literally just not taking yourself so seriously that you can't mm. like, you can't be present because that's really what it is. It's like suffering, that kind of suffering is almost coming from a place of wishing that things were different than they are. And it takes you out of, yeah. And it just takes you moment. out of like being present. And that's what it's about. It's about, I don't know. Anytime I've ever done mushrooms, it's like the universe is like, you're doing a good job. <laughs> like, <laughs> just chill, chill out. out a little yeah. yeah. Like, it's okay. Totally. You're doing great. You're doing uh, great. And like, yes. for some reason, like when I can just like step into that, I'm like, okay. Like everything just doesn't feel so heavy and I'm a better person for those people in Mm. my life. And Ben is so good at this. Oh my Mm. gosh. Okay. So I tried to carve out some time where I wasn't doing a ton of work in September and I thought I was going to go to Spain and then I'm realizing I don't want to like spend all this time by myself in cities where the world's like half shut down. And I'm trying to get him to like take a week and go with me somewhere, but like still work from there. And last Mm. night I was getting like frustrated because he wouldn't entertain the idea of like going on like a trip with me really, or at least that Mm. was the story I was telling myself. Uh And I just like looked at him and I was like, our relationship is like literally situation after situation where I get you to do something outside of your routine and you look back and you're like, you were right, Sarah. (laughs) This is literally how I'm talking to him too. You were right, Sarah. (laughs) This is me trying to get him to go on a vacation with me. Like, fucking, like, can we just like, (laughs) and he looks at me and he goes, you're right. And yet you are still so bad <laughs> at having this – at getting me to see your point. He's, he's like, you still go – about no, this is what he said. He's like, and you still go about this so poorly. <laughs> and he just like looked at Loki and she was like, when will she learn? She's such a butt loo. Like he was like – Oh, my God. He was like, and it's guys. incredible to me that you're still so bad at having these conversations. <laughs> He's like, because at the end of the day, you know that all I want is for my opinion to be heard and respected and look at you. (laughs) But the way he said it made me like, I just started laughing so hard because I was Mm -hmm. like, oh my God, what am I doing right now? (laughs) First of all, I love you two so much. And that is, I think, observing your relationship, that has been something that I've seen that I'm like, wow, this is something I want to value and cultivate in my relationships, like in general, just levity and humor, even right in the middle of a tense scenario, he's like so calling someone out it. in their bullshit in a way that just like, like makes laughing. you laugh at yourself. Like he's yes. like, and you are still so bad at it. <laughs> Look at you. <laughs> so and in that moment, good. I just felt so like naked. Like I was like on a stage and like a light just like shone on my like <laughs> shitty behavior. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. It is like – so, okay, so we're talking about this whole idea of creating suffering and heaviness and pain 
because of our mindset or whatever we're thinking about the situation when it's completely unnecessary and really serves no purpose but to drain us completely. And it's like, why? Why do we do that? And which is what I've been thinking about. The things we do, especially the things we habitually and cyclically do, like some of them, it's just we're doing it because we've always done it that way. But at a certain point in our life, Mm -hmm. right, at a certain point in our life, that way of thinking or that behavior served a purpose, Mm -hmm. right? Like this fear served a purpose. It was reinforcing some idea, right? Or it was only the thing that was like really, truly only modeled for you because I think that that's where Uh – Like that is – that was literally modeled for me. In my family, to get what you want, you like muscle your way through a situation. You force it basically. Muscling your way through is like the only thing I can think of to describe it where it's like you're using – like the main motivator is like guilt. Like if I can just like Mm. guilt this person into like coming on vacation with me, then I get what I want, which is like – and that sounds really like fucked up, but really like that's not like the core – like the intention behind it is sweet. The intention is like – I feel strongly in my intuition and in my gut that if I can get you to try and work remotely from a beautiful location and see that you can work outside of your own home office, because I was like, remember, you didn't think you could work from home at the beginning of the pandemic. You thought you were going to have to go in the office and here you are. And this is just another version of that. So the intention is like, is good. But I just like growing up my family to get each other to do what we wanted. We were like, Come to the movies with me. Like, <laughs> it's just so Don't aggressive. you love me? Yes. Yeah. It's so aggressive and assertive and so unnecessary. <laughs> yeah. But it's so, I guess, sorry, this idea I had to interrupt is, because you're, yeah, no, sorry. <laughs> no, thank you for elaborating on this. And I think it's just really interesting because the purpose that, I guess, to go along with this like thought experiment is the purpose that that serves for you and your family was just what was modeled to you is that this is how you get your needs met mm-hmm. and this is how you do it's it. It's very and so, simple. Yeah. Yeah. There wasn't other options to that and you needed to have your needs met. So you behaved that way because that was how you got your needs met. And it can be anything from like how you feel valued or where you feel a sense of self-worth. Maybe you feel a sense of self-worth by like running yourself ragged and giving of yourself so much that you're miserable. And then you're like, I'm stuck in this loop where I'm tired and I'm miserable all the time and I don't feel valued. But this purpose that that's serving is way down deep somewhere in your subconscious. You believe that that is actually the only place that you have value is when you Mm -hmm. overgive or like literally – Totally. Fill in the blank with any like cyclical behavior that you have. And it's like, ask yourself, like, what purpose is this serving for you? Mm-hmm. And, and I've been asking myself that question is like, why is everything so tragic? Like, why, <laughs> when I go through something hard, why is it so fucking tragic for me? And, and trying to get to the root of like the, and it's, I don't know if it's like melodrama or I feel like I need to be in some kind of movie, like moody music video or something like that. I know it's like very Enneagram four. Does it feel like life has more meaning when it's heavy? Well, I think it's like high highs and low lows. I think that's when I feel like life has more meaning when I'm like just roller coastering instead of creating. Oh, you're like addicted to all the chemicals probably in your body. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> you probably like you probably don't feel alive when things are like stable and normal. I'll say that like that definitely rings true for me. It's like there are times when like things are so running so smoothly lately where I'm like, is this boring? Am I bored? <laughs> Am I Do I bored? need to shake shit up? <laughs> Do I need to go pick a fight with someone? <laughs> I mean, Ben definitely calls me out on that. He's like, he'll just be like, is it because like things are going too well that you wanted to like have this fight? Oh my God. He's like a wise, <laughs> wise. Benjamin. He's so good at bringing in. He's just like the way he makes fun of me is good. Like it's so it's good. So good it's for so good for you to bring that. Yes. It's so yes. loving and it's so poignant and so true. I don't know. It just like. Just makes everything feel easier and better. And maybe the belief actually, I think, you know, because there is truth when you were talking about the belief and I kind of like cut you off and was like, also nothing else was modeled for you. But actually, I think it, there always is a belief. And I think the belief in that situation is that if you want to get what you want, like this is how you have to do it. And there's not another way. You have to work way. hard and you suffer. You have to work hard. Yeah. And it's okay if it's uncomfortable rather than like easy. Like I think that that the idea of things being like easy 
is like that's not a story for me. It's like really hard to yeah. uh, like that's why I like tried to make it my focus for the year because I'm like it's not a story for me that like things can be easy. I don't know. Yeah. We grew up with the narrative of like work hard, pull yourself up by your bootstraps, like don't ever quit. Like all these narratives around essentially making yourself suffer, doing something you probably don't like and that's the only way you get success. And you Mm -hmm. have to work 40 years at the same job, like whatever the beliefs our parents were handing down to us. And we're now here we are like experimenting with is that the only way, you know, is that you only achieve like these successes or happiness or any through suffering? Like, does Mm -hmm. that have to be the narrative? What does it look like then to shift that? perspective into what if things were easy. Like when I'm saying like things are hard, when you hear yourself say those definitive sentences, like things are bad, things are hard, or I'm I'm sad, or this is not working, or whatever this like closed mindset kind of idea is, to like I've been trying to ask myself like does it have to be this way? Yeah. Like yeah. does it have to be hard right now? What am I doing that's reinforcing the fact that this is hard and what can I be doing to bring levity or ease or whatever into that? Because I do think it goes back to that that is generated, those feelings of heaviness, hardness, whatever. It's like mostly inside you. You know what I mean? Totally. Because like, have you ever experienced like when something unfortunate happens, maybe you break something or you – I don't know. There's an some kind of an accident and there's like a timeline in which you're like, oh my God, ah, ah, and you're like miserable and totally. sad and upset about that. And then there's the timeline where you just laugh at it. Yeah. You're just, wow, this is like, I am a fucking mess and I can't carry things or I can't like I'm do I'm telling the you, man, I keep things. bringing up Ben, but he's so good at that. But sometimes yeah. there are situations that happen like that where my gut reaction is to get angry and mm. and I actually will assume that Ben's going to react in an angry way, and then he just starts laughing. And I'm like, mm. oh, that's an option. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what are the other options? I mean, Sarah, I have literally – there was one time I ruined a pan of brownies. This was like when I was in my like early 20s. And I laid on the kitchen floor <laughs> and wept. <laughs> I'm sorry, but that is fucking hilarious. And it's like, is that the only option? Is that the was that the only option there? <laughs> I think everyone can relate to that. Right. And like here I am in my life. I would like to be able to ruin a pan of brownies and fucking laugh about it. Like we're laughing about it now. Like that's <laughs> I want that to be a value. I want it to be levity. I want to do the well, thing that Ben is doing, you know? Oh, so true. I think the other thing though that's interesting cuz I think the like yes, we're talking about pushing back on like the idea of suffering in the way and it's easier, I think, to see it in the way it shows up for our parents and how we're trying to do things differently, especially mm-hmm. around mm-hmm. like career choices and things like that. Mm-hmm. But I think our there is a different like flavor of that in our like time where if you are in a life that is too light and has a lot of levity and ease, we have our own version of like punishment. And I think a lot of that conversation is around the idea of like privilege. Like if you have – a life where things are okay and you're not worried about the bills or discrimination or things like that. And that's why I actually think it's like wonderful to see the people who are talking about this who are maybe in a place where they feel like – like Africa Brooke, I talk about her a lot and I love her because she's like, I refuse to like be a part of these like narratives just because I'm black, for example. And so she's like saying a lot of things that you don't hear people saying. And so I think that there's – and it's not even just like with privilege around discrimination, but even around like scarcity and abundance. You hear people kind of like shaming those who are trying to talk about abundance and saying like, Mm. how dare you? If you can live an abundant life, like it must be because You're you're privileged and something was handed to you or something was easier and like for sure. We all have things in our lives that were easier and we all have the things that we've struggled with. And it's like this idea of like comparing them. And we're like in like a comparison war of like, Mm -hmm. who has it worse? Who has more to overcome? And I think that really it's just like, it's all like different. 
And it's just not comparable. And it's it's like, I think that's like one of the things that we're having a hard time with in like social media specifically is that everybody is feeling like their own pain is being minimized. And so it's creating this like crazy divide. Like everybody's like mad at each other because they're like, I still struggle. I have my like shit that's hard. And so I think that like the idea of talking about just like bringing ease into your life and levity and humor, even in the in the spite. I think like in the face of like how hard – like the world is fucking crazy right now. There's no like denying that. And people are struggling yes. and everyone has their, their thing that they're grappling with. And I'm so grateful because I think we need everybody's versions and everybody's stories and the things that they're grappling with to elevate us in like that particular area, right? Yes. And I think that it's like what we're missing is that everybody has their thing that they're struggling with and trying to heal and grow from. And that's like what they're here to do. And that is like not going to be the same as mine. It's not. Right. Like in, it is inherently yes. going to be different, but it doesn't make their story, their pain less valuable in the sense that like it's a important thing that they're going through and bringing to the world. And Yeah, I don't know. I just – it's like the nuance of like – This is such a good thought. Yes. Yeah. I just – I'm thinking about constantly because I just – I feel frustrated. My biggest frustrations with like the world today is that people are just not realizing that like like what is important to me and what is – what I need to be working on and what feels like the most important thing to me is not going to be the most important thing to somebody else because it's not their struggle. Like their struggle – wasn't like, I don't know, addiction. Like they, and so they don't get it. And so they judge addicts and they think that they're like horrible people and they're just Mm -hmm. like a mess and they're like a plague on society. Right. It's just like everybody's thing that they're going through is so essential and so needed. And I can't help but think of it like, even just like from a scientific standpoint, like we need the diversity of experiences to like grow collectively. Like this is like how, I don't know, it's like ecology minus, but like in like a sentient way. <laughs> it's like <laughs> it's like we need everything and I just wish that people would I don't know. I do believe that like ease and levity and humor has so much power and healing and I want it to be something that other people feel like they're allowed to have because I think a lot of people feel like it's like our version of our parents like suffering is feeling like how dare I like be happy and laugh in a time like this when I think that's like yeah. really actually what we all need to be doing more of, quite frankly. Absolutely. Like that thought is like ass backwards, bringing our joy to the world and as well as our pain, like, but don't forget like the, yeah, that levity, that joy you can acknowledge the truth of your circumstances. I really, I really fucking love everything that you said because I think it resonates so true to me. Like we all need to be doing the thing, our thing, our version of healing, our version, and to like yes. shame and judge people for that. And then there's this thought, Sarah, is that Jeff Bezos has $200 billion. <laughs> yes. Right? <laughs> I just like did not see this coming, but I love it. Yes. I know. I couldn't not like, I just have to say this. And we are all very incredibly poor in contrast. (laughs) It is almost mind boggling. It's something like we would have to work like 70,000 years making like, you know, a Mm -hmm. very, very decent income to, okay, this is a tangent and I'm going to just like plop it down and we can move on. But When we, all of us people that are like (laughs) down at the very bottom of this like thing and there's these very, very few wealthy individuals and when we all just spend all of our time fighting against each other and hating the little joys we create or the little successes or the little whatever or fucking like annihilating each other for having making a mistake, it is just like that is such a complete waste. and works really well in this completely off balance scheme of things for all of us at the bottom here to be fighting against each other instead of recognizing the imbalance that is happening in our culture. And (laughs) and, right. (laughs) Yeah. It's interesting that you say that, but like, couldn't it be argued in the same thing that like maybe that 
I mean, we don't know what's going to happen with like Jeff Bezos and that like amount of wealth. There's also a timeline in which like, I don't know, he turns around and does something really important with it. I don't know. And I think that it's just interesting to me. It's like we generally have an obsession with each other. I think the obsession we have with like trying to say like what is right and what is wrong when really we have no fucking idea is like just holding ourselves like down. And it's and something that I've also been thinking about a ton is just the idea and you've said it recently to me, the idea of just like trusting each other and trusting mm. that there's no possible way that we could understand or comprehend like why you're making the decision that you're making, but that it must – like, I have, like, some sort of, like, growing faith that, like, trusting other people's decisions – I don't know, maybe – I'm sure it's, like, naive to some extent – and how important that is, for one, my own sanity, but two, in creating a world that is, like, diverse in experiences and just, like – yeah, just, like, human experiences because – in that diversity, in the diversity of human experiences, again, I like always bring it back, I guess, to just like when you study like ecosystems of in like mm. biology, it is the diversity of creatures that creates a robust and like sustainable ecosystem. And so to me, it's like that, but like, and just like a ment and our mental capacities and our emotional experiences. If I can remind myself that, like, yeah, I think that person's acting like crazy and I wouldn't do that with my money or I wouldn't do that, like, yes, maybe, like, yes, that's true. I also think that, like, you have really no way of knowing unless you're in that person's shoes. But I think that if I can remind myself to trust that, like, that person is literally doing the best that they can with what they have. I just actually think that one, not only does life get easier, but two, it just like, I don't know. It's like getting off my own high horse and thinking that I, I have any fucking clue what is like meant to be. Um, I feel like I'm getting like too, almost like too abstract and I'm trying to think of a story to like bring it down. But like, I don't know. I just think that when we trust each other more, people show up better. Like, I just like wonder like what the world would be like if we just like were like, Jeff Bezos, we have faith that you're going to do something really good with that money instead of the entire world fucking hating him just for having that much money. We fucking contributed to it. He has that much money because we all order things on Amazon. We played a part. He has that much money because of how much stuff I order on Amazon. And like we could collectively stop buying things on Amazon, but we're not doing it. We're just like hating him for having the money that we created. Like we did that. And like, what would the world look like if we were like, you know what, Jeff Bezos, we have faith, actually, that you're going to do something really good with that. Because I know in my life, when people have treated me like with trust, like I think you are actually in because I really do believe that people are inherently good. I really do. I think it's like trauma and abuse and hate. And when we like put that on people, that's when they do bad things. And like, what would a world look like where we were like, I have faith that you're going to do good things with that money? Like, would he I like hear soften you and, and I love open you? Up? <laughs> You're like, no, fuck Jeff Bezos. <laughs> and Eganated. all this is so fucking triggering for me. Uh, no, but I hear you and I love okay. you and I agree that there does need to be like more of that. Let's pose it as a question. I think it's so funny that this kind of – I'm sorry. This is all my fault. But that we're going to talk about Jeff Bezos? <laughs> we, yeah, let's, let's like get it out of our system and then we can like leave it. I, I really want to start out by saying that I like – there is also the side of me who's like, fuck that dude. <laughs> like, don't totally. like – Totally. Of course. No, 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 no. I, like, I, I get you. I got you. I am very comfortable holding two completely opposing opinions of a human. Like, that is like very, very possible and very comfortable for me. I'm just playing devil's advocate here. Anyway. No, I appreciate it it's for the sake of conversation here. So this is the thought that's rolling around in my head. I could, in my, like, what I have, I could give some money, <laughs> relatively a very small amount of money that would equal something that was massively generous for me to give to uh -huh. aid a local something that was helping feed people, okay? Mm -hmm. And I could, out of my generosity, give 30% of my income to that and have very little effect. 
very, very, very little effect on this world. This one man could solve world hunger. He could, he could have a tremendous effect on the world at any point, any point that he would choose to do that. And the man doesn't do that. You know what I mean? No, so- I completely agree with this, just so <laughs> okay. we're clear. There's yes. not like a – I'm just saying is the way in which we're like hating him like effective – like it's like oh, kind of probably coming- not. No, well, it's a place of defeat. We don't feel powerful probably and so we just hate him, you know. And it's also like literally serving no purpose. Like we're not causing any change. We're literally draining ourselves. So it's like it's about like creating that suffering again, right? Like first of all, I totally agree. Like I think it's like trash, <laughs> but I'm just saying that like sitting around and like obsessing over that not only is it just draining us, I guess it's like to what extent are you going to just like hate on Jeff Bezos? Very easily you can be like, fuck that guy and move on with your day. Or you can like sit around and like really hate Right. (laughs) So like there's that. I think the whole reason why I even brought this up in the first place and the whole point I was trying to make was when you were discussing about how so easily we can just like jump down people's throats and hate them and judge them for their little tiny, tiny place in the world that they're trying to express themselves when there's fucking Jeff Bezos oh, over there you mean cause he's so big. doing fuck all with all of the money in the world. <laughs> and I'm just like, let's have a little bit of perspective here, people. Like, yes. Wake up, hate Jeff Bezos, move on with your day and be nice to the rest of us that are here at the bottom of the shit pile. Like, this is what I'm trying to say. Oh, my God. I love you so much. Yes. Okay. Fine. We can agree. Or we can that be like one, one of our – Yes. Can that be like one of our shirts? But also like – the story's not over. Do you know what I'm saying? Yes. Like the and this is what not I love over. about your perspective. And yes. that's that's all I'm saying is like the story's not over. Me hating Jeff Bezos isn't like getting me anywhere. I contributed to his wealth. I mean, I know it was like so minimal, right? But like <laughs> we all contribute. Like I think that's kind of the funny thing to me about Jeff Bezos is like we're all addicted to like cheap shit that we want in like an hour and that's how he got rich (laughs) like Mm -hmm. he provided a service that we all want and very much rely on and now we hate him and i think it's i don't know i think it's a little funny to be honest yeah but (laughs) yes he like do i think he's uh, yes i think he's he's also being a piece of shit yeah but i also don't think the story's over and the part of me that's like is us hating him like contributing to that story. I I don't know. There's no way I'm going to change everyone's mind. It's so fun and easy to hate him. That's the other thing. We love to have villains. (laughs) And he's such an easy one. Anyway. He actually looks like a villain. Yes. The whole thought was less on let's all like – spend more time hating this one man and more let's have some fucking perspective about like just the massive divide and what we're experiencing – yeah, like let's let, – can we like not hate on somebody because they're like fucking struggling and they had like a really rough fucking life and they're just like trying to find their shred of joy? Can we just like <laughs> let that person have their like tiny withered flower of happiness? I know, it's just, like, 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 rem- it rem- <laughs> reminds me of the conversation we had recently with somebody who like, you know, went through Master Your Mindset and like talked about getting a massage for themselves and how it was a big deal because like – I mean, I remember that the first time I like got a massage for myself and I was like, oh my God, am I just like the worst? Who I, who the most egocentric, (laughs) selfish person on the planet? How dare I get a massage? Who do I think I am? Jeff Bezos. (laughs) Right. (laughs) How dare I? And here I am just like trying to figure shit out. (laughs) Right. Like, yeah. Can we just be like nice to ourselves and others? (laughs) I just think, though, I don't know, I've really been trying to, like, I guess, play with the idea because it. I think in part in a naive way because it brings ease into my life, but really reminding myself to trust other people and that the basic, basic thing that they really are trying to, like, do what they can to, like, navigate life well. Because I do think that. And, like, we all have a different set of tools. We've all had, like, different sets of traumas and experiences. But anytime – okay, so here's the thing. Anytime – I've been thinking about this a lot because I've been thinking about with Ben. We had, like, a situation where I looked at him and I was like, it feels so good to be trusted. And he, like, kind of was like, huh, okay, like, yeah, I obviously trust you. You're a trustworthy person. And I've been thinking a lot about how growing up, 
I just remember not being trusted like ever. And I t- I've told you about this recently because I saw this like there's this person I follow on Instagram. He does this thing where he talks to you as if you are like about your childhood. Like he talks to you as if it's like one on one. He was like, I'm really sorry that when you were a child, before you like were aware of being manipulative, like you didn't like have that in your repertoire of <laughs> like ways to navigate the world. And that a, an adult, your parent, looked at you and thought you were being manipulative when you were just – you didn't. You just like didn't know. The example he gave was like your parent thought that you weren't doing the dishes because you were trying to get out of it when in reality you knew how to – you didn't like fully know how they wanted the dishes done and you felt like you were too old to ask and so you were ashamed. And so you like tried to avoid it because you were embarrassed that you didn't want to say like, I don't know how you want the like dishwasher loaded or something like that, which like is a big deal when you're like 10, you know, Mm -hmm. because you're like, I should know how to do this or or whatever it is. And then the parent is like, or for me, is like just thinks that you have like bad intentions or you're like trying to manipulate them. And I feel like that was so much of my childhood. Like Mm -hmm. I just constantly – I remember always being like, why is like everything I do being interpreted with such a negative like connotation? Like I'm just like trying to hurt and manipulate. And I'm realizing now as I'm getting older that it's because my parent or my mom really experienced like probably trauma in an area and felt manipulated and and so therefore like thought that I was trying to manipulate her when I was just like way too young. And so it became the story that she told herself about me. And so I just remember growing up being like I have never been like trusted. And then – This turns into me in high school where I was like, well, if I'm not going to be trusted, like, what the fuck is the point? Like, I'm I'm constantly grounded. I'm never trusted. So I just was like, what's the point? And I started, like, sneaking out of my house when I was in high school. And I, like, didn't even do anything bad when I was sneaking out. I was, like, still such a good kid. But I grew up thinking I was such a horrible person because I was never trusted. And so I think because of this, like, thing that I've really been thinking about a lot, I've just been thinking, like, what would – how would it turn out if we just trusted each other more? Because in my experience, when people trust me, it's like I want to be more trustworthy. You know what I mean? And so it's like – like right now it feels – like I was saying to Ben, I was like, it feels so good to feel trusted. And he just was like, I mean, of course you're trusted. You haven't like really done anything to like break that. And so because that feels so good – I don't want to like damage it. You know what I mean? Whereas the other way around when you're just like never trusted, you're like, well, fuck it. <laughs> like Exactly. Right. I, if everyone already hates me, like, I don't know, maybe that's what's going on with Jeff Bezos. He's like, everybody hates me regardless of what I do. Like, I'm, I'm just going to fucking go to, to space I, in a penis. I'm go to spe- <laughs> exactly. <laughs> in a penis bracket. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's just – I just think – I just wonder – I wish I could do like a social experiment where we just all like trusted each other and I have a feeling that it would be pretty fucking magical. That's my theory. Hmm. So I have like a few thoughts about that, of course, as you were talking. You do? Yes. (laughs) Surprise. Usually you Um. don't have any. (laughs) You kind of touched on a few things. This idea of transferring your own pain onto somebody else, especially an innocent child, right? Huge. So I mean, this that. is like where family trauma, like and you're just passing that shit down because you're not mm. working on your own shit. You're putting it on your kid. It manifests within them. And then like going back and asking the question, it actually is a question we all need to ask because we live here in the US, which is everything is based on this kind of idea of Christianity, right? And this belief system. And it very much is a belief system that says you are inherently flawed. And I'm not really talking about Christianity right now, but I feel like we are handed a kind of manuscript to life that says you are fucked up. (laughs) You came out of the womb fucked up. And so anytime you do something that reinforces that narrative – then you just have this cyclical thing and you create all this suffering in you because you're like, oh, yeah, I was told that I'm inherently sinful and bad Of course I messed up up. on this thing. I'm a piece of shit. Yep. I'm a piece of shit. So then play that out and you have self-loathing and why do I want to live? Like, and it makes all – it all makes a lot of sense. And I had to address that. I had to be like, is that really what I believe? Is that really what I want to subscribe to? For me, it was like right in my face when I birthed my first baby and I looked at this small person and I was like, there is no fucking way that this 
little person is inherently sinful. Mm -hmm. I was just like, there's just no way that this person is fucked up and that it's all just in her to be like fucking awful, you know? And I think- It's so important. and And it goes back to what you were saying, that people are inherently good and they experience conditioning that then they have to learn to heal from. But if you're growing up being told that you're inherently bad or inherently sinful or original sin even- and that just like plays into you. You're like, I, I just, yeah, you you go through life how I went where you're like constantly perplexed until you believe it. It wasn't until I like, be- then I was like, okay, I mean, you hear it enough times or it's like communicated to you enough times and then you're like, I am a piece of shit. Like, <laughs> and you believe it. And then you spend your 20s reading personal development books, trying to get yourself out of it. <laughs> and then you start a podcast with your best friend trying to figure it all out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then you and then you're in your 30s and you're like I think I might not be a piece of shit. <laughs> I think I might be okay, you know. Yeah. I've gone through some. I'm stuff. not Jeff Bezos, so <laughs> I'm not. I'm no fucking Je- the, Jeff Bezos. On the other hand, piece of shit. <laughs> what, out of the piece of shit. <laughs> Fuck that guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh uh, what is our 40s gonna be like? I can't wait. I fucking can't wait. Is that just when you like? Uh, I know. You just stop. And you're like, it doesn't matter. Start wearing like white linen gowns. I think. Yes. (laughs) Yes. You've been looking forward to that for your whole life. I'm just like waiting for my 40s. I'm just counting down the days. I know. No. And so to kind of go back to like, I think you have to address that belief. What do you believe about people? Are they inherently good or bad? Are they intending you harm or are they not? Mm -hmm. Are they trying their best and sometimes fucking up? And then you decide how you're going to treat them. Are you going to treat them like a human that fucks up and is capable of awful things and makes bad decisions and has probably a really, really reinforcing story in their life that caused them to create so much pain and that the pain that they're causing you is reflective on the pain that they're feeling in themselves and yada, 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 all the things, right? And then going back to, can you witness them in their humanness and believe that they are inherently good and they're and trust them that they're doing what they need to do to figure their shit out, including Jeff Bezos, including going to space. He's figuring some shit out. Okay. And I hope he <laughs> figures it out out there in space. But the thing is, is, we all hope he figures it out. Like the thing is, is right. like really we need to be rooting for him because if we root if if he like if he does it could be really great. It, it could be fucking he could solve like you know it could be really hunger. great for us. <laughs> yeah. Yes. It would be really like, great for us. Uh, I sound like I like Jeff Bezos. <laughs> like I just like want to. I like how we're, we're going on a Jeff Bezos roller coaster here. Wait, so the thing intense. is, is like as I have shifted my focus from thinking that people are bad or trying to cause me harm, which is also pretty self centered, like really, and just like super dramatic, but like is where I used to be. And I started thinking to myself that like I want to start trusting people more and I don't think that they're inherently bad and I think that they are not just like outright trying to cause me harm. And generally, they're pretty self-centered and just like going through their day thinking that everything is about them (laughs) like I am. Yeah, right. And as I've like started to push through that, what I've realized is I cannot think of one example where I have taken the time to get to know someone and their story, and at the end of it, I've had less empathy for them. Mm. Every time I've taken the time and had the patience and the wherewithal to like and just like try and get to know a person, even a person – like and I have some friends that are like extremely difficult. Like one in particular comes to mind where he has just like tested everything in me because he's a very difficult person to be friends with. Like mm-hmm. that is just a fact. But the more I've gotten to know him, the more I'm like, oh, my God, he had, like, one of the most horrific childhoods I've ever, ever heard of. Like, Mm -hmm. and when you know that and, like, I mean, I still would, like, hold him accountable when he would have shitty behavior that was unacceptable. I mean, there were many times – he jokes. He's like, your friendship has made me so much, like – he was like, I used to be, like, have a really shitty, like, attitude and, quite frankly, like, an attitude towards women. Like, I was just very misogynistic. There were many times in our friendship, like in college, where I was like, you can't fucking say that. <laughs> like, right. And he would just be like, fuck you, Sarah. And I would be like, oh, no. And I was just like, not uh-huh. back down. <laughs> and we would like get yeah. into it. But then when you like get to know his story, you're like, you see where it comes from. He, had, he was raised by a military dad. He was like, beat the fuck up constantly, mm-hmm. sent to military boarding school, like literally like basically tortured mm-hmm. throughout his childhood and like surrounded by like men. Did not have any women in his life. 
<laughs> until right. it was like until he went to college and met all, and then like our college was like all these like powerful women who are like badass mountain bikers and whitewater like kayakers and like yeah he's super independent and he literally is just like and then I went to college around li- some of the most fiercely like independent women who were like your behavior is unacceptable right <laughs> And he's like, I don't know. He's just, he's grown and changed so much in that area. But like, that's, I guess my point is any person I've taken the time to get to know, my empathy for why they are the way they are has grown. It's never gone right. the other way. I've never heard their story and been like, oh, oh no, like, I, I like hate you more. You're the now. worst. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, totally. It's this whole idea of like, Are you going to just tell a story to yourself based in your own fear that, no, this person is not doing the dishes because they're a piece of shit and they want to ruin my life? Or is this person not doing the dishes because you don't fucking know why? And maybe you should get curious and ask, why is it so hard for you to do the dishes? Mm -hmm. Like, or or what is it? What kind of, can I help you? Like, that's the whole thing is like, let's get curious about the things like recognize when you're making an assumption that you're telling a story, this person's just a misogynistic prick and he has like no hope, right? Yeah. And get curious and get to know him like you did. And you had understanding and empathy. And then via that empathy, this person had an opportunity to grow and learn about himself. And like, mm-hmm. this is why it's like so now we laugh. critical. We laugh about it. Yeah. He's like, remember the yeah. times where I was like, so he's like, and he's embarrassed. He'll be like, I was so embarrassed. I like, The thing I said to you at that one point and you just like fucking got all like puffed up your chest and was like, no. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Uh, It's so good. Two questions that Ben asks that I think are so good now are one, when I'm upset, he always says, what's the story that you're telling yourself right now? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, and that gives me a chance to like, because usually it's a story about him, right? And he's like, okay, I hear you. And then he'll like, tell me what is going on for him. And what was the other one? Oh, is it, it's not a, it's not a question, but he also will say when I'm getting frustrated with like something that he's doing, he'll say what you're not seeing is. And usually it's like it's something I don't know, like I'll, me wanting him to go on vacation. He's like, what you're not seeing is, is I'm like way behind and getting the hours I need to get at work and mm-hmm. I cannot just like take off and mm-hmm. not like have consequences at my job you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, those are two things that just help me remember to like engage curiosity because the drama we create in our own minds is just like exhausting. It is. And really, it's just a joke. Nothing's real. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) I know. It is. It's a cosmic joke. But yeah, like I feel like that has kind of been the theme of this conversation is like getting curious about what things are you making hard, difficult? What suffering are you like projecting into your life? What judgments have you made about other people about their inherent badness, you know, and belief that people are intending you harm? And how can we get curious about all those things, ask ourselves what we're telling ourselves and like shift the narrative into ease and joy and like believing and trusting in people's goodness and their own ability to figure their shit out on whatever timeline that they're going to do it, you know? And that doesn't mean you don't have boundaries. That doesn't mean you don't call people out on their bullshit and you say, no, you can't like speak to me like that. Like, but trusting ultimately it's your journey. And I don't know what the fuck it's like to be you. I have no idea. Yeah. I think also in that, I think a big choice that has to happen that I don't think a lot of people, well, I don't know. Some people don't realize is a choice is that we also, I think collectively have a little bit of a narrative or an ideal that like suffering is noble. Yes. And suffering is like Mm -hmm. righteous, right? Because I know I feel almost more comfortable talking about like the suffering I've experienced and the hard times than I do talking about like – And success and – Like it's so much – Like right now, I would much rather dig into like my most horrible, darkest hours of my life rather than like – the abundance and success that I've experienced. (laughs) Like that would be – like I would much rather go to the dark side and talk about that because it feels way more comfortable, way more comfortable. Because we've been conditioned to romanticize suffering. We really have, you know, Mm -hmm, and like mm – Romanticize suffering. And how do we romanticize like 
romance and happiness and success and like and these like lean into the discomfort like and then it's asking like where is that discomfort coming from what is the story you're telling yourself about when i show people my happiness x y and z like what's the story what's the fear you know and there's a lot to be afraid of going based back on like what we were talking about about people just like being so judgmental and coming up with so many reasons of why, why you're not allowed to be happy, you know? But the thing that I'm like also really realizing and is more at like the top of my mind, I think, because it's like one thing to know something or realize something, and then there's a completely different side of like actually embodying it, right? And I think that one thing that I've actually been trying to embody rather than just like cerebrally no is that like judgment only hurts me mm. like it really does it's like <laughs> the other person on the other side of my judgment is unaware mm. of it complete jeff bezos is fucking so yeah. unaware of how- i mean well maybe not actually because it's like a it's collective, a collective judgment, judgment. <laughs> and that a collective judgment can be very loud and as we know very very painful but in on an individual like like level, you know, that person who I'm judging because she's like deciding to do like that XYZ with her life, she's so unaware of it. Unless I like actually like hop on Instagram and like scream it at her in the in the DMs, which is like a whole nother thing. But like for the most part, the people who are not doing that, <laughs> you're I mean, you're just like you're just hurting yourself and bringing your own like levity down. Yeah. By doing that. Yeah. It's like all, it's all, it's all that's happening here. I like how you said bringing your levity down. It's almost like you can paint a picture about everything you do. Are you bringing that, are you bringing things down or are you bringing things up? You know what I mean? Like, are you, are Mm -hmm. you adding, are you adding or are you taking away? (laughs) Like, you know, I want to add, I want to bring things up. I want to laugh at the fucked up brownies. I want to, you know, like trust (laughs) people. And yeah, maybe I can get to a place where I can hope that Jeff Bezos does something great. But like, (laughs) you know, it's like, how can, yeah, I want to be able to address those stories, address my where I place value on suffering and get get to a place where because we all ultimately just want to feel good about ourselves, you know, like yeah, this would be loved, loved, seen, understood, yeah, yeah, totally. Mm. And it's all process, and it gets uh, there are days that are easier and days that are harder, but I don't know. I just want to laugh more. I want to laugh more at myself mostly. Mm, Same. (laughs) Yeah. I'm definitely coming to a place where I'm ready to shift out of some heaviness and into Mm -hmm. into experiencing more levity and acknowledging, yeah, I know I'm conditioned to react to this circumstance by being a sad piece of shit, but instead (laughs) I'm going to like flip the script on its head and I'm going to like attempt something different, you know? How are you going to do that? I think my plan is I just need to – well, kind of what I touched on earlier. When I'm recognizing, wow, I feel really heavy right now, Mm -hmm. to ask myself, what am I doing that's perpetuating this heaviness right now? Am I like wallowing in like – am I like comatose in bed? Am I like starving myself? Am I – you know, have I not drank water in like 10 hours? Like what is it that I'm perpetuating suffering in myself? Mm -hmm. And what can I do to change that narrative? You do a really great job. And I think this is something I love about our friendship of like calling out what you're working on. And that's so important to have people like that in your life. We're Mm. great at this. But even Ben and I actually struggle with this because sometimes if I call out something I'm working on, he'll try to use it to hold me accountable. But it's like not really from like – a supportive place, you know? So I'll say to him, I'm like, I want to say this because I want to hold myself accountable in this area, but you can't use it against me when you're frustrated. Right. No, no, no. (laughs) But like one thing that I love about our friendship and that we're really good at doing is calling out what we're working on and really not feel like I never feel like judged Mm -hmm. by you. And I hope you never feel judged by me. You'll say like, Uh, like this is like what I'm going through. I feel really alone or something like that. And I know this is the narrative I tell Mm -hmm. myself and I'm working on Mm -hmm. that. (laughs) And I think that's so helpful because I think bringing that level of awareness to it in like almost like a everyday way rather than like thinking it's going to happen on some mountaintop all at once 
is how the change like actually right. happens. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you need those people in your life that you can yeah. do that with. And you're so good at like I'm expressing some big sad and you're like, okay, well, when's the last time you've decided to feed yourself or move your body? Or like <laughs> there are other things at play here. And you're so good at reminding me that I'm not just this like giant brain and ball of emotions, but I have a body as well. And like I was like I was laughing so hard. <laughs> I sent you like a picture of the breakfast that I ate this morning because I was so fucking proud of myself for making myself breakfast. And it was like a it real, was a meal. real meal. It wasn't it, it wasn't like just I'm sugar. I'm so proud of me. <laughs> But yeah, it is, it's kind of like bringing yourself – like bringing yourself down when you – like I feel like I could get so frayed out into just like existential dread. And when I bring myself back to like what can I do right now in this moment that will take me five minutes or less that can bring levity into my life. Send me a Kevin exactly. James Thornton. TikTok. TikTok. Eat, eat a, a meal. meal. Maybe move your body a little. <laughs> Like, I don't know. Yeah. There's just so many small things. Get a massage and not beat yourself up yes. for it on the way. Hell yeah. <laughs> anyway. Uh, well, man. I love you. I just I just want – <laughs> this, this is, is where, where we, we talk about profess our love for each other. <laughs> I just want it so much for people. I mean, at the end of the day, I want people to be less like hard on mm. themselves. It's like my biggest wish for people mm -hmm. in the world because – we beat ourselves up and we make things so fucking serious. And like we need to get serious. Like that's not what I'm saying here. Like you have to get serious to get shit done. But you can also get serious without it consuming your like soul. Serious is different than being heavy. Like when you're heavy and down, you yeah. know. And I do think like, yeah, people are hard on themselves and then they're hard on other people because they're hard on themselves. Because we have some kind of belief mm -hmm. that that's the only way we – grow or change and it's just so opposite you know from the truth mm -hmm. yeah so we've agreed everybody's gonna stop talking shit to themselves you're all wonderful inherently good all, we tr i trust uh -huh. you you're all inherently good i trust you and fuck exactly Jeff Bezos. done and right? done in inclusion. inclusion done we solved all prove the world me problems wrong, Jeff right Bezos. here together prove me wrong <laughs> yeah. I would love that. <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? Uh, <laughs> Wouldn't that mm -hmm. be nice? Uh, well, I love you. Everybody be easy on yourself. And we'll talk soon. Yep. We'll talk to you guys next time. Bye. Bye.